Hey everybody, welcome back to Two Acres Evolving. Today I have a couple of things I need to get done. I need to go in and transplant a couple of things. And look at this dog. Gator. Lord. A tree fell on that fence a while back and I just have things propped up against it right now until I can get it replaced. But apparently, propping things up against it does not help. I've really got to get that fence fixed. He's going to end up hurting himself if I don't. Um, but anyway, um, I've got to transplant a couple of things, um, a couple of hydrangeas, and then um, I'm probably going to plant those alliums that I mentioned a while back in a previous video, but um, I don't think I'm going to plant them in the area that I mentioned before. So let me go ahead and turn the camera around and show you what I'm going to be working on today. I'm going to be working on these hydrangeas that are in these planter boxes and the Supertunia Vista silverberry that I planted in the front this area does not get very much sun at all and these prefer full sun but look how big these have gotten and it does not look like it's suffering on blooms at all this one over here this one actually is doing a little bit better it gets a little bit more sun over here but these have just been awesome so I'll definitely be using these again next year. But I'm going to be working on getting these hydrangeas out and planting them in my landscape. Um, these are the City Line Paris hydrangeas. These need full sun to part sun, so they're not getting near enough sun in this area. Which I didn't plan on keeping these in the planter boxes permanently anyway. But I didn't even get any blooms while they were in here because they're not getting enough sun. So I'm gonna pop these two, this hydrangea, and this one over here, I'm gonna pop these out. And then go find a place for them in the landscape, probably in the backyard. Alright, so now I'm going to take everything back to the backyard and um, I went back there earlier and I think I may know where I want to put these. So I'm going to go ahead and place them where I think I want them just to see if I like them in those areas and then I'll get started planting. I think one of the hydrangeas I'm going to plant right here, right in this curve, about right here. I planted those lilies here um, a while back and as you can see, they didn't make it. I had one right there. It's right there, you can barely see it. And then I have one right there and they are beyond dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and then I'm gonna put the hydrangea probably right in the middle, right about here in this curve. Um, this is the bed that I have the David Austin roses in. A couple of days ago, these David Austin roses looked awesome. Um, but then we got a bunch of rain and I think we got a bunch of wind and now you can see all the blooms scattered along the flower bed. Which it happens. I need to come in here and uh, there's a bunch of dead heads on here that I need to come in and cut off. And while I'm here, remember when I did the other rose video, you want to cut to the first set of five leaves. So let's see if I can get this. 
So there's the first set of three. So I would cut it right here at that first set of five. I've had a couple people ask me about that. So there's a reminder. But for now, I'm gonna plant the first hydrangea and then move on to the other area. All right, so I do think I am gonna like this here. And sorry if you can hear my neighbor's dogs. Every time I come back here, they decide they wanna <laughs> carry on. But um, I do think I'm gonna like this hydrangea here. It's right behind these David Austin roses. So it, this is a full sun area, but I think that the David Austin roses will provide a little bit of shade for the hydrangea, which I think will help it. Um, I came in and I watered it in really good. Um, anytime you plant something in the ground, you want to make sure that you water it in really good and make sure you have all the air pockets around the root ball completely filled in. If it's not filled in, then the soil will sink down after you water it. And then you can just add more soil. Um, but this hydrangea, it gets about two feet tall and about three feet wide. So it'll fill in this curved area right here. And then probably next year, I will get some smaller perennials that will go on either side and go all the way down this way and then all the way down this way as well. But I do think that I'm gonna like these here. So I'm gonna let the water soak in here before I put the uh, mulch around it. And um, while I'm waiting on that, let's go ahead and get the other one placed. All right, I think this is where I'm gonna put the other hydrangea. This is on the other side of my rock pathway that I did. And then I have this blank area right in here, right behind this lamb's ear plant. I think I'm gonna plant it right in the middle, about right here. And then over here, which I still have some mulching to do. I need to go get another load of mulch. Um, over here, some things are gonna be changing as well, but not today. The canna plant is gonna be coming out and I'm gonna be moving it to a different flower bed. I haven't even created that flower bed yet, so I'm still waiting on that. And then this Bobo hydrangea right here, this one gets about four feet tall and about six feet wide. So I'm thinking I'm going to plant another one back behind this rock right here, right about right here and then plant another one over here on this side so that it forms a curved hedge. I just need to go online and order a couple of more of those so I can finish that. But right here in this area where these few weeds that I need to pull, um, right over here I think is where I wanna plant the three alliums that I was gonna plant in the back flower bed. I waited too long and I think I've changed my mind on where I want those. So I'm gonna plant those three here and then the hydrangea over here behind the lamb's ear.
right, I got the hydrangea planted, watered in, and mulched back. And I got the alliums planted. Now these alliums um, don't have any blooms on them right now, but they will have purple blooms on them. I'll pop a picture up on the screen so you can see what they're gonna look like. I got these on clearance at Lowe's. So these were the last three that they had. So I'll probably have to wait until next year, but I think I wanna go either get three more or six more and just plant a couple more that's just kind of go into a drift right through this flower bed. And with the purple blooms, I think that would look really good. And also, once I get a chance, I need to go get another load of mulch and fill this in. Once it's all mulched in, it'll look a whole lot better. Besides spring, fall is also a good time to go out and plant and transplant things um, because the temperatures aren't too hot or too cold. What you want to do, though, is you want to make sure that you're at least six weeks away from your first average freeze date, which mine is around the middle of November, so I'm totally fine with planting all these things in the ground. But anyway, I really appreciate you all watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.